So over the past year, I've been working on these. This is called a pocket rack. It's an EDC organizer that uh, it's, it's a 3D printed card that you can download for free and print it out for yourself if you like. There are a number of variations, thank you to all of our viewers, who, that have been built out over the past year. And um, some are, are really, really cool. So you can get them all different sizes now. You can get them with different features on them. But uh, if you want to go to thingiverse.com, you can, you can download the file and print out one of these for yourself for free. So over the past year, again, a lot of the tools that have been appearing on these, this is a fully loaded out pocket rack. You can see there's a set of tools on this side and another set of tools on the other side. And uh, it's pretty narrow, very thin. Everything in here is designed to be on the rack. Uh, it's selected to be on the rack. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice little setup. It's designed specifically for Urban EDC. This setup is designed for Urban EDC. So it's not a survival uh, setup, EDC setup. It's, it's not you know, really designed for wilderness setup. It's designed for Urban EDC. It's designed to make my life easier. It's designed to make my, my family's life easier, friends, a stranger on the street who just needs a, a battery, uh, their cable has become disconnected on their, on their car and, and they need to reconnect that battery. This will do that. This will help me do that or fix it for them. And that's what it's made for. That's what this is designed to do. So um, again, over the past year, I've been working with, with Temu on a lot of the, uh, I, don't, I shouldn't say working with, I've been buying a lot of stuff from Temu to, to go on these racks. It's, it's cost effective for me. It's, uh, it allows me to extend my production um, budget and um, they have free shipping as well. So I have not had any affiliate payback from them. I have, they haven't compensated me for any of, any of these things purchased. I've just been buying the stuff there because it's been cheap. And um, I've found effective things that actually work very well on these racks. So about two months ago, a month and a half ago, they reached out to me and said, would you be willing to do a video that's dedicated with just our products on it? And I said, sure, I'm, I'm kind of doing that already. Um, not just their products, but I've been using a lot of their products. So I've been pretty happy with um, the shipping that I've received and what I've been paying for them. So I, I, I thought, sure, I can do this. So what we're going to do and what you're seeing on this rack is the result of that, that cooperation with them. Um, I've been going back and forth over the past month quite a few times. Um, things getting shipped back and forth, and, and this is the result of that. This is a budget EDC setup. It's a very low cost for what you're getting for this. Um, I have, you know, the, I have Knipex pliers, which are pretty expensive. I've replaced those with, with locking pliers that have been designed. These have been custom built now by me, and it's really easy to modify them to do this. And, oh, ah, one, one other thing. So there's a, a price comparison chart that I put together too that compares almost everything that you see on the rack and that you'll see that you saw in the uh, thumbnail when you first came in to the AM version of that item. So you're going to see Temu's prices and then you're going to see the AM prices too in that spreadsheet. So it's quite eye-opening to see the difference in pricing um, plus the free shipping and you don't have to be you know a prime member to, uh, <laughs> to, to get the free shipping which is pretty pretty nice. Anyway, I'm going to get into more detail now please stick around. This thing is a, it's a pretty long video. If you want to jump off at any time and then come back later on, go ahead and do that. But um, you can jump through it. There's, there's actually multiple, there's a section too that's set up for, if you don't like this item, I've got a, an option and other options available as well if you want to take a look at those. So almost all the items on here, I have multiple options available as well. But this is the setup that I like, that I'm, I'm going to be using. So it's, it's, again, I think you're going to like this. Stick around. All right, so what you see before you here is everything that's going to go from here into this pouch. So I'm going to run through everything that you see and why it was selected, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, to get started, let's take a look at this watch. This kind of blew me away. Um, so my old Timex has uh, bitten the dust. It's still running right now, but I can hear that the mainspring has disengaged. So I can't wind it anymore. So it's just going to wind down to nothing pretty soon. But I've had this thing for, gosh, 89. Um, and it's lasted me forever. I looked last night on the Timex website and uh, you can't buy them anymore. And everything they have on there was over $100. And this thing, I think, was, I don't know, 15 bucks when I bought it. So anyway, it's, it's been a good watch. But take a look at this. So 
I was looking around for watches that were sort of equivalent to that and found this. Um, so this is a quartz movement watch and it's uh, under $3. Um, it was brand new. I tried it on, I played around with it. The other interesting part about this is that it's got a reflective surface already on the back of the watch. So if you're into like uh, signaling people from a distance, this might be a way to do it while you have your watch on and not have to modify anything. I thought that was kind of interesting. Also keeps track of the date and it actually works. Some of these don't actually keep track of the date. They're just there for show, but this one actually does. Um, yeah, I was pretty impressed with this. Nice, thick band too. Um, so it's doubled over the entire length of the band, which I thought was interesting. And it's got a stainless steel clasp on it. So I thought that was kind of nice. Uh, for three bucks, I, <laughs> I don't think you could go wrong with it. So this is probably gonna be my replacement watch for that, that Timex. Um, we'll see. So put that back here. All right, next part. This is the new, these plastic pouches. I found, I think they're PVC, um, but you, you buy these in packets. Again, everything that's listed here is in the PDF with the pricing and comparative pricing to uh, what you would pay for it on quote unquote prime on the prime website. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here that's exactly as listed on prime. Um, I think you're going to be surprised at the price differences. Anyway, let's get back to this. So you're going to buy a packet. If you're going to set these up with these pouches like this, this was specifically purchased so that it would fit inside that pouch with everything else here. So this is a little mini med kit that I, that I pulled together. Um, it's got, I'm going to pull everything out of here. I'll never get it back in right away while we're watching. But so it got gauze in here, Purell singles. That's mostly alcohol. Um, so just a simple gauze. Uh, I've got multiple Band-Aids, Advil, um, Tegaderm. This is really, I love this stuff. It's amazing. It's, it's kind of a, a Band-Aid that goes on. It breeds. Uh, I've got some additional Band-Aids on the back and some wet ones too for wiping things down. And that's about it right now. There'll probably be some more in here as well. I also have um, super glue, which is actually great for sealing up wounds, um, for gluing skin you can, uh, it's, it's fairly easy to use. You will drop on there and you seal it together and leave it and then it'll just stay on its own. So it's, it's pretty nice for deep cuts. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put this back over here but not with everything in it because it's gonna take me forever to reload it. And we're gonna go over to here. So this is an antiseptic spray that I put into a perfume vial. Um, again, you can buy these in packets. They have, uh, this one is specifically for spray. So you yeah, open it up. And you can see a nice fine mist. And um, this is an antiseptic and it also has a numbing agent in it for pain, which is kind of nice. Um, this is made by the folks who make uh, the Band-Aids. Um, so anyway, I thought it was pretty neat. They also make it so that uh, thicker ones, so, so you can push lotion through this if you want to do uh, like suntan lotion or something like that. You could include that as well. So that's, that's part of a new part of the med kit. Um, next thing over. We've got the pocket rack. So this is the standard pocket rack. You can download free um, from Thingiverse. Um, let me show you what it looks like when it's loaded up with all the straps. So here's a red version of it. You can see I've already got a flashlight in here. Uh, they pop in and out pretty easily. And um, just for showing how the tins work, which is right there, I had that one loaded up with um, assorted bits. But I flipped this one over. I think I found that I had that one mounted upside down so that this top part is actually down on the surface here. But I found that the weight of the bits is actually uh, gives it a lot of momentum so that it pops open on its own. This way, it doesn't do that. So the uh, bits are actually mounted to the, to the pocket rack um, exactly. And then you just slide the top on top like that. It uses up a little bit more space on top, but I'm finding this a much more efficient way to um, to hold the bits in place or whatever else you want to put in these. So you can actually get these tins, and I'm just going to mention this, in packets like this off of Timu if you are interested. Um, so I have them listed in the, in the PDF that uh, comes with this uh, in the description if you want to take a look at them. But you can buy a whole slew of these things for really cheap. And they're great. You can use them for all sorts of things. You don't have to just use them for the uh, pocket racks, but they're great for all sorts of EDC related purposes. The bands on here, these bands, um, I have a link again in the PDF for how to make them. 
and how to uh, purchase them off of Temu. And then these are the shrink uh, insulation that you would put over wires. You would heat it up, heat shrink, and it would uh, basically contract over the top of wires, but they're absolutely perfect for this, for this purpose right now. So I'm using them there. So I've got them set up in, in this direction, and that card would be set up the same way. I'll do it at the end so you can actually see what it looks like when everything in here is fully loaded onto that card and then dropped into the pouch. But on the back side, I can put larger items, like let's say uh, this ratchet here. So the ratchet would just slide, pop it in here, slide it right in, and you just pop it in like that. And that's, that's all there is to it. And you just pop it back out. So you don't have to take the bands off and on like you did in, in the original version. This is a much different version. It'll probably evolve even further, but yeah, this is a standard size card. Again, you can, you can download this and 3D print it off of uh, Thingiverse. And there's multiple uh, versions of this now from, from people who've been um, contributing to the file. So this thing has, has changed. There's multiple different styles, sizes, all sorts of things are happening really interesting with this. So if you're interested in that, again, this will go inside of that pouch along with a lot of other things. So yeah, it's kind of a really versatile way to, to carry your EDC. So put that aside. So that's what this is here. It's the same exact thing, it's just in black. And um, so we'll go on to the next thing. So here we have the uh, bit extender that would go with this ratchet. I really like this ratchet. I searched through several of them. I'm gonna show you some examples of this ratchet in different style, not this particular one, but ratchets in different styles. I've got one with the connector on the back as well that I had used for a while. And then finally settled on this one just because of how well it's rated and I'm, I, it really feels, it's got some substance to it. It's really well engineered. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. So it's reversible as well. Let me, whoops, let me pop it in here. So you can see there's the extender. You can flip it over, pop it the other way. It goes both ways, pretty nice. Very solid, nice piece. It's not, it's not garbage. It's, it's a nice, I was really surprised to find this. Um, so again, again, this is available on Temu. The pricing and everything is gonna be in the PDF, so you can take a look at that. So we'll put this back over here. And here's a bit selection. So um, this is a bit selection that I already had in place. But again, if you buy this, it comes with bits that you can include in here if you want. If you're going to use one of the other uh, ratchets that I'm going to show later on, they all come with bits as well. So the bits all fit into this, these little cases, these little tins, and they work very nicely. So you just have to select which are going to work for you. So I prioritize this based on the bits that I usually carry, which is for my bicycle and for some of the gear that's here as well. Um, but yeah, that's my selection. Anyway, I put the quarter there just to kind of give size to everything. Um, there's, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting how small everything is and everything here is very, very functional, which I, I was very careful about that. I've tested pretty much everything here and was pretty satisfied with it. The next part is a big lighter. Um, I have not had a Bic lighter in the past in one of these kits. I've been using matches, just a little match safe. I just got back from a convention and I used this thing, I'd say 10, 15 times helping people uh, melt down their badges that they were using. They were fraying and this thing kind of just melted the edges so that they wouldn't fray anymore on the, uh, on the badges that they used for the convention. So it was, I was really amazed how I didn't know I needed it until I needed it, and then it worked out really well. So everybody was very thankful to have, for me to have the ability to, to fix their badges for them, which I thought was pretty funny. This is a little flashlight. Um, I've shown this in past videos. Uh, there's a link again in the PDF um, for, for this particular flashlight. It has multiple functions. It has, a I guess, three different power points for the front light. You can see it's going up and up and up and then down to minimum again. I think it's like three or four lumens at the lowest level. Um, and then it has on the front here, it's got one, two, three. Oops, let me do this really quick. I'm messing up. One, two, three, four. The front should go. And then it's one, two, three. That's UV ultraviolet. Four, that's red, red blinky. And then five is a little police light type thing. So you, if this is nice to attach to the, you know, the back of your belt if you're going to be walking on a road or something and just ward people off from running you over. But it's, it's a very nice light. I mean, I've, I've been using these for a while. 
It's not as good as some of the more expensive ones that are out there, but this thing has been pretty rugged. It's held up really well. And I, I, I recommend them. I mean, it's low cost. I think it's about four bucks, three fifty nine, something like that. But, um, it, they, they keep on trucking. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a nice little light. So I included that in as well. Again, the links are included. Now this is different. This is kind of to replace what you would get from a Swiss army knife. I was really surprised at this. I'm still trying to figure out how much I like it. I'm liking some of the functionality on it. It's got kind of a different way of uh, the spring loaded capability on this. I guess it's like a, a, a torque type setup, but it, it works very effectively. The, I found that, that this um, particular uh, scissors is pretty sharp. It's, it works very well. And the other neat part about this is that it's got a, oh, I should have these down. Oh, let me show you this. So this is a tick remover, um, which I found pretty, I don't think I've ever seen one of these in a pocket knife before. So it is definitely a tick remover. I'm sure you can use it for other things as well, but th this is what I've seen tick removers at, set up as before. Uh, and it's, <clears throat> it's built into the pocket knife. Another neat th part about this is that it's got nail clippers built in. So <laughs> that's, that's pretty slick. I'm kind of impressed with that. So press this back down. You have to a little bit of movement to get everything back in place here. Uh, let me see if I can get this back up. Oh, I forgot. I gotta press that up. Put that down. Locks in place, and everything folds up. It's a nice little package. Slightly thicker than a, than an equivalent in a uh, a Swiss Army knife. The steel seems to be pretty good. It's very tight. The spring load capability is, is really good. I'm not quite sure. I like the the outside of these things, um, but. Uh, I'm wondering if you could replace it if you really wanted to. And I have an equivalent too that's entirely in stainless steel. It's slightly different design as far as, as how the, um, the clippers are set up on it. But again, it's, it's pretty rugged. It's a very solid little knife. I'm really, really surprised by this. Uh, the blade's sharp. It, it just, it's, it, it feels like it's gonna hold up pretty well. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm recommending this as part of it. Again, the link is, is in the PDF if you wanna take a look at that in more detail. And then I've got a little uh, container of super glue. Um, I've, <laughs> people have been telling me to load this up. I figured out a way to do it. So in the tin, I have not, um, I've cut off the top on this. It usually comes with a much longer top so that you can get a better uh, capability of, of taking off the cap. Um, but I didn't feel I need that. You can see it's still sealed. I have not used it. I've used a, I've got another tube that I'm <clears throat> finishing up, but I have a new one in this one. Once you open these things I found in the past, that they uh, they dry out pretty quickly, so I've been avoiding doing that. This is like one usage. I had like I think there were six in the packet of these uh, these um, Loctite super glues, but uh, yeah, I recommend this. This is kind of cool. As I mentioned before too, you can use them with a med kit. Um, I think uh, I've I've <laughs> glued fingers together accidentally while while working on on projects. They're also good for repairing the bands. So in my elastics video. Um, you can see I'm now using zip ties for connecting these bands. It also shows how to use a little uh, wooden bead to do that. But I put a drop between these two, <clears throat> then I tie it together with the zip tie, and it's the break. The other parts of the band are going to break before that that portion breaks. Um, it's it's pretty impressive how one drop of this stuff and a zip tie is going to hold those bands together. So it's nice for repairing your pocket rack as well. So I'll put that back over here. And then I've got this little beast. So this is a little uh, charging cable. It's a three-way charging cable. It'll go USB-C, USB-A, and I believe, yeah, this will go into an iPhone as well. So it's got the iPhone connector as well. So it's, it's pretty versatile for charging. Um, I think it was four bucks, maybe less. Uh, really, really cheap. It works very well. I've been using it um, on this pocket rack. And it's held up very nicely, considering the one I have currently was, uh, I think I paid $18 for it. So the prices have dropped considerably on this. And this one seems to be very lightweight. And it's a little bit smaller, too. So it fits much more nicely onto the pocket rack. Um, pretty, pretty nice little piece. I would highly recommend having one of these just because of the versatility of being able to use multiple um, USB connectors. Piece of wire. So this is just regular stainless steel wire. It's got an insulation on the outside of it. 
Um, it's good for tying things up. I've used this fairly frequently. Um, I've got a way to store it on the pocket rack itself now with these tubes over here, which I'll get into in a bit. But these are a little piece of wire like this. Stainless steel wire is uh, highly, highly recommended. It doesn't rust. Um, the, the insulation on it also is good if you want to run some current through it, low current, I guess. Um, but yeah, you can tie things together. It's, uh, it's good to have a little piece of wire like this. Zip ties. I got two of them. Um, you can use these to repair the elastics as I had shown you before um, and with the super glue or you're connecting things together. Um, a couple of zip ties is, I figured out again how to get these on the rack. I've kind of set up a, a storage facility now in these little tins here, um, these little aluminum tubes. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Um, yeah, so they work, work very, very nicely. Uh, let me get over here. Got a little crowbar. Uh, this is fairly inexpensive. You can also put in uh, bits on this if you want to use it as a driver as well. Um, I've used it as a scraping tool. I was over at my daughter's place and uh, she had some problems with, with windows and things that needed to be scraped out. I just got in there with this thing and ground it out and it, it worked really nicely. Um, but it gives you the option too for putting uh, little O-rings on here and then holding a single bit in place in the middle of this. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like. So this will drop right in there like that and you have the two O-rings and it'll hold it in place. So if you have a double-sided bit maybe, it might fit in there. Uh, it looks like it might be close, but um, yeah, you could put a, a you know, an <clears throat> A Phillips head bit or a flathead bit or whatever you want to put in here or if there's one for a specific tool that that you want you could drop it in there and then just put in the uh, the two o-rings a little black o-ring here and here and it'll hold it in place perfectly um, and they've also set this thing up I haven't been able to get it work quite right it depends on the bit but if you drop it in here like this it will lock in place and then you ha it gives you a little more crank on this thing so they set up kind of a spring system here to hold it in place. And um, it depends on the type of bit that you're using, but it, it will definitely hold it in place. Uh, let's see if we can get this one too. And not, not as well. That was pretty much just set up that way. And then you got a bottle opener, of course, and a little measuring. I guess it's one centimeter there. So yeah, nice, nice little tool. I, pretty inexpensive. Um, I think it's like two bucks or something. It's stainless steel, so it, it, it is... It, will be you know a magnet will pick this thing up and uh yeah nice so let me drop this back over here and this is the ratchet i was talking about earlier um yeah i'm just picking it up again i guess um I, it's pretty cool i really i really like this thing a lot i it's i can't i wish you could feel this it, it's got some weight to it it's it's well constructed and i just I just really like this. I, I had I got a couple more from Timu, and I was comparing the ones all of them together. And this is the one that really, the size is perfect. It's flat. Um, you can see on some of the other ones that that they make is that it extends upward like this, which takes up too much space on the rack, and it really doesn't it doesn't add to the functionality. Um, but this is just it's a it's a nice tool. It's really a nice tool. It's highly rated too on the on the other website as well as on Timo. And it's it they they seem to go in and out of stock pretty rapidly. So if you can get a hold of one of these, I, I like it a lot for, for the price. It's it's very, very nice. Okay, now here's where things get kind of interesting. So I call this a T-Rex. <laughs> so it's a modified vice grip. Man, it doesn't look like a T-Rex now. It's got that little mouth and jowls and everything. So this is a modified um, needle nose, vice grip, I shouldn't say vice grip, locking pliers. So it had, I took about a half inch off the top of this and then I took down the edges. So this was just, it's really simple. You, you mount this into a vice or just put it on an edge with a clamp on this side holding it in place. You're gonna take your hacksaw, you're gonna take off the, the top, about a half inch or whatever amount you want and then take a file to the outside to take the to round it out any way you like. I would definitely file it out um, if you want to. I also did instead of just doing a hacksaw on this, I um, actually, I'm sorry. Instead of doing a file on this, I, I did hack off a, a large portion of it and then went to, with a file to round it off further to really smooth it out. But it's a it's 
it's really small, compact, and this is fantastic. This is just, it's really nice to have a tool that locks in place. I can use it on larger bolts now and lock them down. And unlike with, um, which you might get with a, one of Kinefix pliers, this thing, it keeps stuff locked down. So I don't have to wear my hand down to try and get purchase on a bolt or something like that. The, this, the piece is doing it itself. It's holding it in place. I'm not clamping down on this. This is clamping down on it. So, yeah, I, I really like this. I'm, this is something I might be playing around with a little bit more and just experimenting with, between this and the Kinefx pliers. But this is a, <laughs> it's pretty cool. I, I would definitely recommend this. Or, uh, and the link again is in the, uh, in the PDF if you want to take a look at it and mess around with it. They also sell them in the normal fashion, which is already pre-rounded out. But I like the extension that I got on this. The other thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to, I'm going to cut a groove in here on both sides so I can drop in a blade, a wood cutting blade or a metal cutting blade that's probably about the same size. And I might be able to store it too in one of the cylinders that I'm going to have on the tent, on the, uh, on the pocket rack as well. But yeah, this is, this is to replace the Knipex. Now I have another alternative if you don't want to go down this route, um, which, a, which is a small pair of pliers from um, Swiss Tech that I've been using them for years, and I just saw a new one that they came out with. Um, it's a different design than the one I had originally. I've had that, I had for five or six years, this other small uh, Swiss Tech pliers. But they fold out. Anyway, I'll get into more, more detail when, when I start showing the alternatives for all of these items that are here. But th this is really nice. I'm, I'm really having a fun time with this thing. Um, so you can you know adjust it to pretty much any size. It locks in place. You can see just it's locked now. So you can use it to hold things in, in position too if you're working on them. It's almost like having a little a clamp with you. Um, so you could put you know small things here, maybe fishing hook or something you wanted to work on, and then just put like a pin or something here and you could have like a little tripod set up and just work on it while, while it's being held in place. Um, yeah, lots of options here for, for working with this. So Straight pin with the little ball end on it. These are really nice because you can hold it. Um, I've used it a couple times now to pick things out or uh, move things that are very small around. Highly recommend if you can get a hold of one of these little stick pins with the ball on the end. It's much, much easier to work with than a standard pin. And I'm gonna, I usually have this inside of the uh, cylinder as well or in, in with the, um, my glasses. Anyway, I featured this in a previous video and some people did not like it. Um, I've got an alternative too that I'm going to show in, in this video later on when I'm showing all the alternatives. Um, this extends, and I'm told too that you can replace the um, the ink uh, holders inside. So I, I have not been able to figure out how to do that, um, but I'm going to continue to work on it. But I think these run about five or six dollars. And again, there'll be a link in the PDF if you want to take a look at it in more detail. And that includes shipping. But it's, it's a nice, it really writes well. I, I'm really liking this. So, you know, you can screw on the cap. Here's the cap. Just screw on the cap like that. Gives you the option, too, for putting on the keychain if you like. Um, and that's the whole size of it. It fits, like, perfectly on, onto the rack. So, yeah, really like this. I'm... I'm I haven't really seen anything that's going to take me away from using this at this point. But uh, yeah, it, it, what I really like about it is that it writes nicely. It's not a force. It flows very well. The ball head really is nice and smooth, and uh, the ink is nice on it too. So anyway, so far so good with this. I like it. So next in line are these glasses. These glasses are reading glasses for me. Um, they're easy to open. They fold up. They fit inside of this little packet here, which is zippered on it. And you simply pull out and extend out the ear cover, um, the ear, I don't know what you call these, but um, yeah, they, they work really, really nicely. Uh, the link again is in the PDF if you're interested in, and they come in all different powers. So if you're, you know, slightly um, need like a 0.75 or to 2.25 or whatever, they seem to have all the different um, powers that you would need for, for being able to read. So those work nicely. The only thing I, I added too is I'm also storing a few little things in here. There's a uh, cloth here, a fiber cloth. 
for um, cleaning off the glasses. Uh, I can put other things in there as well. It's a nice little case. Um, kind of like the way they have it this this set up, but it's very compact. The zipper works well. I've been I've been using it. I've used it very very frequently. I keep on forgetting my glasses in one place, and you just pop this out and use these glasses instead. So those work great. So and last but not least are these cylinders. So these cylinders are, this is actually a couple different kits, but I've, I've found that the cylinders that are listed, and you'll see them on the PDF, there's, I think there's three different versions of them. I've sort of mixed and matched them to, to fit my needs. Um, so this is, you can, you can have it, you know, just this one cylinder like this. I've also glued a magnet onto the bottom of this, so you can actually use this as a magnet uh, for retrieving things that, that have dropped if you want to. So. You can drop, you know, put, I leave the second magnet on there, just to increase the power of it. But you could run a string on here, drop this down into a hole or something and, and retrieve items. So it, like that, it works pretty, pretty well. These are very, very strong little magnets. But um, yeah, it's, it's kind of uses up no space pretty much. And it allows you to have that retrieval thing in it. But here's the other thing is that, so this is one cylinder. Um, I can, I can basically take these things and start to add them all together. So I can have different storage containers for each one. And they allow me to take, you know, I can put the super glue in there and the wire and the zip ties will all fit into this bottom cylinder. I can do, you know, any number of things. I could have some screws in here if I wanted to. I've got these little bits of wax here that I use for holding things in place um, that I was using for the photography here. And that's why you're seeing these little wax things, but they peel right off if I want, if I don't want to use them. But again, I can put pills in here if I want to, if I want to have medications or pain relievers or you know whatever, you can drop them in. So this gives you a, a nice little way to organize items that you may need on your EDC kit. So it's, it's a pretty neat little setup. And you can also do just a single cylinder, but there's three different options that are listed in the PDF. And again, you can mix and match them to do whatever you want with them. Like you can have a single long cylinder if you want. You can break it up like this with a you know medium size and these two smalls, or you can have all smalls all the way down, and they all fit right on the rack perfectly. So it's it's a great little storage device for for what we're doing here. Anyway, so that's it so far. So in the next segment, I'm going to show some of the alternatives that I found for some of these items. And first, I'm going to take all these items in the next segment and drop them into onto the card and then drop the card and all the other items into the pouch. Right, so this is the the uh, bit driver that is included in the pocket rack that you know we, we just showed you, but there were some other alternatives that are available as well. I had tested this one, and I really like about this one is that it's got a tail way to connect the bits as well, and it's magnetically. So this is really a nice little screwdriver. The problem that I had with it is the width of the driver. It'll fit onto the pocket rack. Um, but it, it pushes quite a bit, you know, the boundaries of, of space. You can see it's, it's about twice the width of, of the one that we uh, went with. 
but the nice thing about it is that it does give you the option of this of this tail which is a really really nice thing i have a little video i can i can show you of what that looked like um so i had used it in a very tight space and this came really it was a handy little piece anyway this is listed in the uh, pdf as well as the other items that are shown here but um again this is a uh, a quarter inch driver um, and it uh, is reversible as well um, so you can pop it over it goes the other way and also we'll take the bit extender as well and you can get some pretty good torque on that sucker but uh, yeah it's a nice little piece um, and uh, yeah it's a it's a thing to consider too if you if you wanted an alternative to using this one I really like the uh, the ability to put that bit in the tail like that but um yeah something to consider okay so with the one that was on the pocket rack it also comes with a, a bit set it's a nice bit set um very very complete and uh, here's all the options that come with it as well so you can you have the option of, of including these um but i sort of mixed and matched in the ones that are in the uh, bit set now i use things that i, I wanted to use and these are four millimeter i believe this is a, a bit driver, so you can basically pull off the tail, drop those out, pick what you want. These are four millimeter. It's got on the front, and you're off and running. You have a little screwdriver for yourself, so that's another option. And I'll put this. I won't bother dropping these in right now. And a really nice little set that I was very surprised about is is this one. These twenty bit. This twenty bit set. Um, so this is a magnetically, it's got a magnet here for holding bits in place and you can pull out your bit set, select which one you want to use. I'll go for this one I can get out of here. Drop it in the front. Oops, whoops, sorry, wrong one. You can drop it in, holds it in place nicely, put this back in like that. And it, it's, it's a nice little screwdriver, but it, again, it's, it's a four millimeter. Um, so this will allow you to work on a lot of very small items. But it also fits on the rack just barely. It's a, it's a pretty tight fit. Um, let me see if I can pull a rack. Oh, here we go. So you can see it's going to pop off the rack a little bit on both sides. But it, it is an option if you want to consider it, if you need something small like that. It's also a good standalone tool just to have around. It wasn't that expensive. I believe the pricing, again, is listed in the PDF if you want to take a look at it. But it's got again 20 20 bit selection in there they can pull out whatever everything is magnetically held in place which is really nice um locks in really nicely so i kind of like that and the last one which i found some issues with this but it slips out pretty easily is this little tiny um, keychain it's got a blade on it as well but you drop it in there but, and it's got a magnet that holds them in place, but I found that it wasn't super secure. Um, it's kind of, it, it barely holds the bits in place, but it's a nice blade on here. Um, locks in place. But yeah, if, you, if you're looking for some kind of little alternative way to have three bits, these aren't standard bits, they're custom made just for this little unit. But you can see it's very small, it's about an inch and a half, two inches. But again, that's another option. So all three of these items are listed in the PDF if you want to take a look at them in more detail. And this is the one we went with. Here are the options for the pliers that I came up with. I, I used to have an old pair of these, but they've gotten a lot more sophisticated. These are the Swiss Tech keychain pliers. And you've got a flat head and a um, Phillips head screwdriver on here. And uh, I mean, they're, they're very small and compact, but they're, they last forever. Um, I think I've, I've pointed these out in, a, in another video. I had a black pair, um, but the design has gotten a, a lot more robust. But they're, they're really nice. I mean, if you want something that's very small, you don't use pliers a lot, and you just want something that's going to act like a... a, a uh, pair of tweezers on on steroids this this is this is it um i i really like these and the other thing is they lock in place once you flip these up like this and if you have it on a keychain 
you can't, this doesn't open anymore. It's now locked in place. So it's, it's like a, a, a great way to have this set on, on a keychain if you want to have a pair of pliers on a keychain. But it'll also fit on the, on the pocket rack pretty nicely. Um, you could probably put it like right on top of uh, something like the tin. It actually fits into a tin perfectly if you want to go for that. So like that. And then you can just mount it inside onto the pocket rack directly. So that's, that's an option if you want to have like, you could have multiple tins on the rack if you want to do it that way and just have this as set up. And you can put this, you can see there's space in there for if you want to put some cash in there or maybe some coins that would allow you to do that. So it's an easy way to, to store this little uh, micro pliers if you like. So yeah, that's, that's an option for you if you didn't want to use the, uh, <laughs> the T-Rex. So anyway, so here's what the T-Rex looked like when you had the, the, the before I cut off the, uh, the tip of the, of the pliers. So you can, as you can see, I came back about a half inch before I sliced it off and then I rounded off the edges. So you can buy these pliers with it already rounded out. What I liked about doing this is I wanted to do the, the mod where I'm going to be cutting that, that, uh, that slit on each side down the middle so that I can grab onto uh, various types of saw blades. Um, it's going to give me a handle for a saw blade. And I just, overall, I really like these. I, I have the Knipex. I use them. What I've noticed is that my hands are big, and I have a hard time with the, the, uh, the smaller Knipex handles on this. This thing is going to give me the ability to lock onto something without me having to continue to apply pressure to be able to take a bolt off. Um, so I've been playing around with it. it. It opens up pretty wide, so I can actually get a hold of, of some you know pipe if I need to, if, if, it, if it comes down to that. It gives me a, a large clamping space. Um, it almost it comes almost to the size that I can get with the with the Knipex, but uh, yeah, it's it's an impressive little tool for for the price. Um, yeah, so take a look at the listing that I have. Um, again, I, I've modified this as well. You can see in here I've taken off the tip of the very tip of the bolt that sets up for locking. It really has no impact on it than, other than to make this shorter on this end. Um, which allows it to fit on the card really nicely. So as you can see, it's a perfect fit on the card. It's absolutely perfect. So I can get the whole thing on the card without any overhang. And I designed it that way when I when I was cutting it. So, yeah. It's a nice tool. It really is. And there's a number of companies. The, the ones that I found on Temu um, were, were perfect. Um, but they seem to run out of stock pretty quickly. So it's, it's a highly desirable piece if you can get a hold of it. And then making the mod is very simple. It's a, it's just a simply using a, um, a coping a coping saw, um, just cutting it with a saw, cutting the, the the tip off the end here with a metal saw, and uh, yeah, hacksaw just just slice it right off, and then you just round it out with either a file, or you can cut the edges off. You know, just take off these edges on each side, again, with the hacksaw. But it's it's a nice little piece. I like it a lot. You can see how you know it's a half inch. It's a really easy cut. Not a big deal. All right, and this is the other little mini pair of pliers. I'm not. I wasn't particularly happy with the. It seems to be pretty rugged compared to a lot of the other smaller pliers that I've, that I've found on a lot of these websites. It gets very compact. You can it fits easily into your hand like this. It will mount. So as you can see, it takes up two slots on the card, um, which is one of the reasons why I didn't I didn't go with it. It's also pretty thick as far as it, as, as how it's sitting on the card. If you if you actually compare it to, you know, this one, it's just it's about half <laughs> half the thickness. So mounting it on the card, you want a fairly small frame for for carrying it around. But if you want to if you want to go for it. It, it's a, it seems to be fairly a rugged piece. I've, I've played around with it. The tools themselves are not particularly the greatest, but the pliers seem to be pretty rugged. I mean, they're, they're nicely designed. The spring probably is the weak point for, for these, but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to pop this out of here too. So if you want to go for it on the card, pop it open, and you got your pliers. They're significantly smaller in size as far as being the capabilities 
um, compared to the uh, the clamping pliers, the T-Rex. Um, so, yeah, little, little dinosaur pliers, anyway, compared to these. But you get the, the additional blades in here. Um, nothing super special. Some are very small, and I, I, I don't think... I, I don't want to duplicate tools as much as possible. I mean, I've got all of these tools also on the um, pocket knife that's included on, on the rack. And, um, yeah, I don't, you know, it, if, if I could have just the, the pliers themselves, that might be a way to go if it was, you know, a bit smaller. But they've built it out further just so that they can accommodate the additional blades on each side. So... It's, it's an option for you, and I have got it listed again in the PDF if you want to go for it. It's it, fairly inexpensive. They're pretty rugged little pair of pliers. They're very small, compact, as I mentioned before, and uh, an option that you can consider. So those are the three options I came up with for as far as uh, pliers. And uh, let's go on to the next thing. So here are the two options that I, I came up with for uh, fulfilling um, what we had with the Swiss Army knife on, on the mini rack. So these are pretty nice. Um, and both of them include the, the addition of having a nail clippers. So you've got nail clippers built onto these, and they appear to be fairly rugged design. Plus, you can use it as a little tiny catapult if you feel like it. And fire one. Yeah, it, it works pretty well. So just be aware of that. The thing might pop open if, you, if it gets anything under here that's going to pop it up. It will suddenly just fire open like that. But other than that, it's a pretty nice little design. The blades are, are you know, reasonably good condition. The file, the file is really nice on this. Um, it works. It's one of the best files I've seen on one of these little, these little um, pocket knives. The blade is a little bit smaller than the, than the one on this one, um, it's, but it is fairly sharp. I mean, it's a, it's a nice little blade. Stainless steel construction on the outside. These scissors are pretty good. Um, again, they have the same type of design as far as the spring load, and uh, a little bit thinner than you would find with the Swiss Army knife, but still quite usable. And then you've got this uh, very nice nail clippers, and they work they work pretty well. Um, let's see. Yeah. No problems at all. So this is the option if you didn't want to go with the black one, but I, I like this one too. I just found that the, uh, the idea of also having on the one we selected of having the, uh, uh this little, uh, tick remover is kind of cool. <laughs> I've been in areas in California where ticks were pretty rampant in the area, even if you were in an urban environment and, um, uh, that's a nice little thing to have. Um, it's not a big deal. You can probably use it for other pr uh, purposes as well, but it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else we have here. So this is the larger blade on this knife. It's, it seems to be, yeah, it's a little bit sharper than the, than, than the other one. Um, and that's just from out of the box. And then here's the file. The file is really nice on this as well. A little bit different. It's not cut into the metal. It's actually, um, something that was put into the metal. It looks like it was just added onto it, but it's, that works fairly, fairly well. And then the way the, the uh, I think I showed this before, but I'll do it once again. So the way this works is it has a release mechanism here on the side, pop it up, and then you have your nail clippers. So that works great. You just have to be sure when you're putting it back in place to push that back, drop it in and it locks in place. So, and then that just flicks right over. And that's it. And I think I showed the scissors before. I don't recall on this. Yeah, these are these are pretty robust, these scissors. These scissors are, are pretty nice. They're much thicker than the others. All of these on this one have a very heavy duty spring loading when you're pulling it out. You can just it just it's got a lot more to torque to it as far as that concerned. So this is the one I decided to go with. Um, I like it. Uh, the scales are not the greatest. Um, you can see I've already started to wear them a little bit. Yeah, being able to pop them off, maybe put something else on here might be nice. But if you're looking for good scales that are going to hold up, probably stainless on this one would be the way to go. But uh, yeah, those are the two options as far as the knife goes.
So here are the, the two options we had for, for the, uh, a pin on, in this selection. I showed this before. This is just, it, it uh, telescopes out, has, you know, it's, it's a nice little unit, very tight, um, nicely machined. And I like the way this thing writes as well. It's, it's a really comfortable um, pen to write with. The other option we have is this little tiny titanium pen. What I didn't like about this, and the reason why I went with the telescoping one, is because it's, it's just too short for my hands. You can see it, it'll hold up. It's got little bolt action for um, opening up the uh, pen. Um, but, and you can also put it on your keychain if you want to. But uh, it also comes with refills. So it's got two refills in the pouch that came with it, as well as the keychain ring. And uh, that's about it. Um, I just didn't, it just isn't comfortable for me to use this as, as much as the other one. I, I would prefer if this was maybe an inch longer, but then it wouldn't fit on the rack properly. So, yeah, that's uh, a component of it is what, what to do with that. So anyway, those are the two options with the pen. And I'm sure there are others, but uh, I was going to go with this one, and this was like a, like a secondary um, pick, so I thought I'd show it to you anyway. Anyway, it's listed in the PDF if you're interested. So these are the two flashlights I selected for mounting onto the card. So this is the, um, the one we went with, and this is the Alone Fire X29, I believe. And it used is a lithium CR123 uh, battery size. It's not rechargeable. It's just a standard um, lithium battery. Do not recharge. <laughs> Alone Fire CR123A. So I'm imagining with this, I think you're going to get a considerably longer runtime with this. The problem is that, I should have shown you before I pulled it out of here, is that um, the sizes of the batteries are considerably, the sizes of the flashlights are considerably different. You can see it right there. It's almost twice as large as when it's sitting on the rack as the, the flashlight that I went with. So I like the low profile here, and it gives me a lot more functionality as far as all the additional features that are on that flashlight. So I've got like three or four different modes. This one has um, three modes. It has low, high, and then it has flash. And that's about it. Um, this one's got, I think, like eight modes or nine modes based on what you want to do with it. So we've got the side lights on it. It has the uh, three front lights, three different power uh, source front lights, including the flash. Um, and then it also has the ultraviolet, which is nice. And um, these have, I've been using these for a while. And they're, I, I think, as I explained in previous videos, they're, they're, they're pretty robust. They stand up. They're not the greatest as far as uh, waterproof. And you know, some of the, uh, the components have a tendency to wear out after a while. Like these things will just pop right off. Um, but they keep on going. They, they, they truck along. So this one has an aluminum um, housing as well, um, which is pretty nice. And uh, I don't know. It's pretty much up to you which one you wanted to go with based on, on your needs if you want something small on here. Um, but this is the one I went with for the, uh, the pocket rack we just built. So that's what I'm sticking to. But uh, you can, I'm sure you could find lots of other things if you wanted to. But again, this whole idea here was a, a low budget low cost um, build out and uh, these are the two that i i settled on that would fit onto this and give me the most functionality so as i had mentioned previously all of the ratchets that that i had ordered to test had usually come with their own bit set but i did purchase like a supplemental bit set that i could use to to pick things out from that i might want um, this is the set that that i that i got um, it's nicely designed. I like, I like this whole design where you just place this over the top and you squeeze it down and you've got this nice compact bit set for it, for yourself. Um, again, pretty low cost on this. It appears to be a pretty, pretty nice set. Um, it's very, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a nice little design. Um, so if you're looking for, for additional bits, this might be the way to go. Again, it's listed in the, uh, in the PDF, it, and it comes with an extender as well. It's magnetized at the bottom. So yeah, it's, it's a nice little option if you're looking for an additional, just to have something around that you can pick from, uh, pick and choose as you, as you need it. But um, they have variations of this as well. So this is one, one set, but if you want to get into other types of bits, 
security bits and things like that, they do offer that as well. So you can have multiples of these around just to select from and drop into your, your kit as you need them. But uh, I wouldn't carry all of these. It's just, it's just too much. But yeah, it gives you the option to really pick and choose what you want. I, I kind of like the, the way this thing is set up. It's, it's a rubbery type uh, case that they have here, but it's, uh, yeah, it's nice. So this is the completed pouch with everything inside. As you can see, it, uh, it does actually fit. It's got some nice straps on the back if you want to hook it onto your belt. You can also attach other larger EDC items to it if, if you want to go that direction. So I'm going to pop it out of here real quick. So again, this, the completed rack is, looks like this. Um, these are my choices. You can go any way you want. There's tons of other ways to go with this. I tried to make sure everything fit here. It was low profile, so I could keep it in a small container or a waste pack or a backpack. If you keep it on you or nearby you, you're going to use it. If it's in your car in the, in the trunk, you're not going to use it. It's just, it's just too much of a hassle. So it's small and lightweight for a purpose, and that's, that's to, be, to be used. So it's an urban EDC kit. You can use it around the office. You can use it at home. You can use it when you're on the road. It's, uh, it works. It, it really does. So anyway, let me know what you think about this. I've, I'm really curious as to what you thought of this build. Uh, it took me quite a bit of time to pull all this together and make sure everything actually worked and did what it was supposed to do. Um, you may have different choices. If you see some stuff on Temu that you think I should be reviewing, you know, let me know. I'm, I'm, I work with them now on some things, so I'm, I'm really curious as to, you know, doing some reviews of, of things. Um, I'm pulling some kits together like this. I'd like to see what you can do with your kit as well. That would be great. Um, leave some comments below, and if you, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. That would be a huge, huge help. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today. I really, really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Take care.